Welcome to Crypto Mastery Class. I'm Susie, and we've got Joe, the creator of the Crypto Mastery Indicators live. We're going to jump into some slides and look at the news, some overall market. We'll look at the hot movers in the basket. And today we're going to unmute you. So get your mics ready on your laptop so we can talk live. First, I want to go over this. Mike Novogratz says gold and Bitcoin will become both will both win if Fed revert rate. So this is on CryptoBasic.com. So Mike Novogratz, he's the CEO of Galaxy Digital. He recently commented on a debate whether Bitcoin has replaced the world's most precious metal, gold. In a CNBC interview, Mike Novogratz was asked by Joe Kernan to comment on whether cryptocurrencies, especially Bitcoin, have replaced gold in respect to which asset class is a better store of value. And this is what Mike says. At least Bitcoin is at 18,000. Gold is at 1,600. Has gold been replaced by crypto? Kernan quizzed Novogratz. He says, in the long run, gold will win and Bitcoin will win if central banks and governments re revert back. So according to Novokratz, government authorities are already being pressured to stop hiking rates due to its impact on various assets like cryptos. This is what he says. We put smart, confident people in the Treasury Department. The moment we put a politician in one of these spots, then it's all over, Novokratz said. So in June, Novokratz said Bitcoin would lead the global financial markets back out of the Fed's tightening cycle. So let's go into that a little deeper. The Treasury Department. Novakratz says things may get worse if the president appoints a Treasury Secretary that may make everyone scratch their heads. And then he says again, we put smart and confident people in Treasury Department. The moment we put a politician in one of those spots, then it's all over. So I repeated that statement on purpose because the question is, is Janet Yellen a career politician? So before we look into that, let's talk about this. Who was the longest ser serving Treasury Secretary? Well, Albert was. He was in for 14, 13 years. And this position has no term ending. So I wanted you guys to have a little bit about history. And now here's a little bit about Janet Yellen. And she is the current U.S. Secretary of Treasury and appointed January 26, 2021. So remember, this has no limits. And the earlier question was, is Janet a career politician? Going back to what Mike is saying, if this person is a career politician, we may have a problem. So I just wanted you guys to have this document so you could see what her history was. So after I read it, I realized that she was more of a professor, but has been on the Federal Reserve Board of Governors from 1994 to 1997. I found that term a little short because on the next slide, you're going to see the term for the Federal Reserve Board of Governors is a 14-year term. So there are some bylaws that you can see when it comes to holding one of those terms as to why someone would hold a term less than the 14 years. And you guys could go on Wikipedia and read this. So the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System, commonly known as a Federal Reserve Board, um, is the main governing body of the Federal Reserve System. But the governors are appointed for 14 years. And then you can go in the statutory description on Wikipedia and you could see that if someone doesn't want to fulfill their 14 year term, somebody else can fulfill it for them. And then that particular person can jump back on the board for another 14 years. So they may be holding a shorter term like Janet did earlier for only a few years and then they can get reappointed again for another 14 years. So as far as the original question, is she a politician? Well, she is very uh, intertwined with the political realm. And I guess that's a matter of your own deciphering is, is holding a position on the Federal Reserve Board 
being a politician or not. So I will leave that question up to you to determine, but I wanted to have you a little bit, I uh, wanted to give you a little bit more information about this and how long somebody in this position could be in this position and technically indefinitely. So this is a point in time when I guess you have to research Janet Yellen a little bit more to know where the potential future of Bitcoin could be. So I wish I had an answer for you, but at this point, I do not, but here's some information that you can munch on. And to end this particular subject, this is the current members of the Federal Reserve Board. And in the right hand, hand column, you can see the term expires 26, 2028, 2026, 2032, 2034, 2030. So you can see that these are long-term positions and they, uh, these people, have a lot of power in their hands, all right? So if you wanna learn more, you can research these people and those are the people that are the members of the Federal Reserve Board. Okay, so next on the news, we have NASDAQ readies crypto custody offering for institutional players. So thought this was a pretty key article because what I wanted you to really take away is this one particular part. At press time, NASDAQ boasts an equity market capitalization of over 17 trillion, eclipsed by the New York Stock Exchange with over 24 trillion. And the reason why those particular numbers are so significant is because you're about to see the current market cap of crypto land, which is under 1 trillion. So as NASDAQ creates the on-ramp for institutional players whom clearly have the access to manage $17 trillion to $24 trillion under management, most likely, then we will, I would say 100%, I, per, I, I pretty much know that this market cap of crypto will get very, very larger. All right. So Bloomberg reported that the Mammoth Stock Exchange recently opened the doors for a new department entirely focused on cryptocurrencies. This department will facilitate custodial services for crypto's largest assets by market cap, Bitcoin and Ethereum per report. And lastly, let's discuss a little bit about Ripple. Ripple attacks SEC citing a lack of investment contract granting investors rights. So what just is happening is Ripple is trying to say we do not need a trial by jury. In recent filing over the weekend, Ripple argued that there was no investment contract that guaranteed investors rights or required the issuer to act in their interests. So what you're about to see on the next slide is that Ripple for the one month has gone up. So whether or not they go to trial or not to trial, this court case is giving them free advertising and you're gonna see that Ripple is going up. So let's look at that overall market. Remember we were just looking at the market cap for NASDAQ at 17 trillion and the stock exchange at 24 trillion. Well, we are at a little sweet $932 billion as we talk. And you can see that we were last week a little bit over $1 trillion and now we're below. But you can see that little line look like it's in the upward direction. So we're not at the floor as we were, uh, looks like yesterday or a few days ago, but it's still moving. It looks like it's moving upward. So if you're in acquisition mode, you may be looking at those coins that are super, super triple red on the heat map and so let's jump in uh here we go so this is what i wanted to, you to see on ripple so typically i do the heat map that's going to be one week but this is a one month performance chart i thought it was significant so since things are a little slower in crypto lands right now or a reverse commute downward it's good for people that don't live in the united states that are shorting the market they're making bukus of money um, so if you have an extra residence that you live in outside of the u.s then kudos for you you're doing great job i'm sure in this market but for you that are here in usa ripple went up 21 percent in the last month so this is what i wanted you guys to see after reading that article and 
at the end of the day, I would say good news or bad news, sometimes any news just gets that particular ticker symbol in somebody's mind and bam, what happens? Sometimes good things happen, sales happen, people buy. The other one I would say would jump in and look at too is Adam. That one is a dark green, PHB and CHZ. And you're going to see on another slide the top uh, coins up for the week, which is right here. So we have chills, which we just saw a pretty dark green, is up 18.98% for the seven day percentage up. Algo, Algorand, is up 12%, and Ripple XRP is up 12%. So we're going to use CryptoMastery.online indicators now. So if you don't have them, you could just subscribe to the above URL, and you could have them too. So here's Bitcoin. This is the USD one-week performance chart with Crypto Mastery indicators, and this is on Coinbase. So you have the early reversal that's has not come in yet meaning like it's not saying it's going to go up that one that i'm pointing to on this particular chart came in weeks and weeks ago because remember each one of these candlesticks represents one week so we haven't had any early reversal saying that it's going to be going up anytime soon it's still on the downward projectile on the average true range which you have the arrow going into that red line moving up and to the right that is still in the downward direction the trend indicator, the line, you can see it's still red, so it's still going down. The key came in weeks ago, but it has not, it has not come, the trend has not hit a number, which means that it would be going in the upward direction. The signal line is still, it's, it's showing that there's an upward trajectory, but it's so tight and close, it will go into a live chart so we can diagnose this at a different time frame. But that's still very tight, 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 tight. So you can see there's a lot of resistance from the absolute spiraling down. And then it there is some there is some life in there moving up. The trend strength indicator, that's what the TSI stands for, that is saying down. That is it. It is what it is. So the volatility index is the last one on this and super low. So super floor, 4.94. So if someone is just in acquisition mode and sometimes I get in these positions where I just like, I just don't want to watch the market. I just like to get something for long, long term holds. So that's when I would look at the volatility index and see, are we on a really good floor? So if I'm holding for the next 10 years, what's the chance of it going up? Well, that's where I usually tend to look for, for that volatility index to be under 20. 4.94 is a phenomenal volatility index if you're in the acquisition mode. But I would have no expectations of this going up anytime. You know, I wouldn't, if I was could purchase Bitcoin right now, I wouldn't have any expectations of any uh, near near future gains on my investment it would just be something that i would get now to just hold for 10 years because i just don't want to come back to this position and buy again i would just like to hold for a long time so now ethereum usd one work one week performance chart with crypto master indicators the early reversal is still showing down the trend is red line down and the signal line is getting tight which usually when that happens it reverses down and the trend strength indicator is down and the volatility index is at 15.19 that means it's in the oversold zone so it's not as bad as bitcoin it's not as floored as bitcoin so you can see the difference bitcoin was at a four volatility and ethereum is at a 15 and you could see the past history in june it was a last time that ethereum got really 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 oversold on that volatility index but this is a fabulous zone still to be in for acquisition. It's just that I'm not acquiring Ethereum at this moment until I see more of those indica indicators being aligned in more of an upward movement. I I'd like to acquire my assets when they're super, super low, which this is low. Okay, don't get me wrong. It's low, but I love getting it close to the zero mark on that volatility index. So Bitcoin is, is getting there. So in the basket we have a lot of coins but some of the most favorite ones in the basket are bitcoin ethereum polygon cardano Chainlink, litecoin cosmos algorand harmony phantom and solana 
and most of these can be found on Coinbase. So these are, again, the hot movers in the basket. Not in that basket, but overall on our watch list. So we have Chills, Algorand, and Ripple that are up for the last seven days. And we have the Crypto Screener. This is on TradingView.com, and these are the strong buys that are coming in for the technical rating. But this doesn't mean that I'm going to go in there and jump in and buy, buy, buy. It's just going to trigger me to look at the charts and have the indicators apply to these charts. So we're going to jump in live and we're going to look at these indicators and I'm going to unmute you. So if you have any questions, you can talk. And then if you have any background noise, you just want to self mute yourself and then self unmute yourself. So you can go to cryptomastery.online if you want to subscribe. So now we're going to jump in live and I'm going to unmute everybody and we're going to look at the chart. And our watch list too. So here is Ethereum and these are our watch lists. I also want to, um, let me see, let me get everybody unmuted. All right, Gilio, Julia. Oh, everybody also, this is being recorded and will be put in the members area and also on YouTube. So just for non-disclosure, I just want to let you guys know if you do decide to ask questions, or talk that it is, it will be on social media. All right, so everybody is unmuted. Joe, it's good to have you here. I wanted to go through the market with you and I wanted everybody to kind of see how I organize my watch list. And this is when you can add your questions for today. And um, if there's no questions, then we'll just kind of quickly go through the market and then we'll have you guys go on with your day. But anybody that has any questions, please jump in. Hi, Susie. All right. How's it going? Hey. Great, great, great. What do you think about the news today? Very interesting. Very interesting. You know. Yeah. Do you have <clears throat> any thoughts about the treasurer? I thought that was really um, interesting how Mike Novakratz was just so uh, adamant about uh, the secretary treasurer being potentially political and not... Um, I guess, economical, but she was a professor of economics. <laughs> Do you have an opinion on that or is that a subject we should stay away from? <laughs> well, um, let's just say, you know, uh, uh, that's a subject probably better off to say less on. Um, they do meet tomorrow um, and it's going to be something of significance um, with rates again. So we're definitely going to see some increased volatility. So that's what the market is kind of Poised for. Um, what I have noticed is, is um, even though the Bitcoin has been going down, there's been a lot of different other opportunities. Oh wow, look what you found! A nice one there with the uh, ERI. There's a lot of other opportunities in these other coins. So you know that's one of the um, the benefits of having the tools is that you can set your alerts so that you can manage and navigate through this uh, storm. Because that's what this is. This is a crypto storm. And uh, basically, during this storm, we're just seeing uh, different coins, uh, money flow being shifted from certain sectors to other sectors. And what that's doing is, is creating new opportunities in different areas than what was before. Meaning is, is that at this point in time, the... Uh, Bitcoin is not going up or the Ethereum is not going up or the Litecoin. Those coins is right now are very dormant. You know, these other coins, um, when you have these uh, chart overlays, they're very easy to uh, show. They show very easily uh, the opportunities that these other coins present themselves, such as this coin right here on the XML. And... Um, these are different ways that you can diversify and balance your portfolio. So your portfolio is not heavy in one sector more than the other. So um, this right here, uh, we've been on um, an ERI alert. You know, there's also, Susie, like if you change that chart to the daily. You know, there was an ERI the other day, like two days ago. So anyone that may have had their alerts set, they may have uh, captured that alert 
which uh, that's pretty much textbook when we get something like that. And um, and Susie, if you could show the uh, TSI, I'm pretty sure we were probably on a, a nice green dot. Yeah, first green dot too. Meaning, um, okay, so let's, I'm going to just get the indicators on the left-hand side, guys. You can do the vertical line, and it'll go through all the indicators. So here was the first green trend strength indicator dot that came in. It was on a number three for the trend. And let's see, at that point, it was, let me just delete this line. It was on the second counter band, and then, bam, it went up. Well, it was, well, depending, I don't know, you know, at that time of trigger for this, where it was on that, but we could look at the day before. The day before it was below the second Keltner band and then it went up to the top. Can I just comment on this really quick, Joe? Um, I wanted to just take note, guys. You have a vertical line here, the horizontal ray or the horizontal line. And so if you're getting in, and if you're, this is a one day chart. So if you like to get in and out within a day, then, and this is the chart that you wanna base your trades off of. So if the indicator is the below, count, the second, the, well, first counter band, second, and I'm gonna call this one the third, then what I do is when I buy it down here, then I would set a sell for the top of the counter band. So I always say, pigs get fat, but hogs get slaughtered. So it's like when I do a buy, I go ahead and put a sell in. So when I'm sleeping or eating lunch or eating dinner or just watching a movie, it's selling for me. And then that's, it just, it somewhat automates the process. And I, I let the Keltner band guide me to where my sell is. Do you have a process that you do, Joe? That's just what I specifically do. And that, that tends to work for me. Yes, I mean, look, that's um, pretty much how the game works. And uh, I just like to just add to that is, is that generally, you know, the markets just don't uh, move right away. Like some trades, you get in and you're lucky, and it the market just moves. But there's others such as this, where is that, you know, if you look, we had a bell alert, and the market went sideways. So it wasn't until the number count restarted back again. So you know, um, we got a bell alert on the trend indicator, then we got a one, two, and then if you notice, Susie, the number stopped. And the reason why the right. number stopped is because the market is not trending at that point. So now, when we look at it at, at a chart, it may look like it's moved much, a lot, but in reality, sometimes it may not move that much. It just may be in a consolidation and then what do you do next? Well, you look for the numbers uh, to start to count higher if, the, if this is a true trend. And in this case, the number count started back up again. We got our three. And when we got the new number count, if you notice, that's when we got the ERI. That's when we got the TSI. And that's, if you look at the radar, the radar is all green. So when there's momentum in the market and there's volume, Right. This is what it's going to look like when you catch something good, and uh, you pretty much let it run. And uh, you can set yeah. your alert for the TSI, and when you get the next red dot on the TSI, you can use that as a as a possible exit. Um, but right now, if you're in this position, you know this is one of one of the ones where I think you let your winners run. Now, there's something else I want to just mentioned to anybody that's new too is I like to base my buys off of a one week chart and then I would within a reasonable time maybe try to get out within that week or or next week or so so this is like it's not intraday it's not like buying um right now and selling an hour from now but if I'm looking at a one day chart and I'm basing my buys on, on the one day, then I may be focusing on more of a one hour when I get out. Like I tend to go towards a shorter time period than what I based the buy on. 
So meaning like if I'm going to be looking at a one week chart, then and I buy in on a one week chart, then I probably will sell on the one day chart. And then if I'm if I'm focusing on a one hour chart and I'm buying on a one hour chart, well, then I'm probably going to sell on that three minute or one minute chart. I'm going to be more. I tend to look personally. That's what what I do. I tend to look at the lower time frame to sell it in because but I'm basing on the the momentum of that larger time frame. And I think that took me probably a year or so to figure it out. It was very confusing. So if you're new to trading, when you see all these different time frame charts and this analysis, you think, well, what the heck do I base my buy on and what do I base my sell on? And the most important process in, in swing trading is knowing yourself and, and knowing your own schedule and knowing your own enthusiasm and interest in these markets or in trading in general and if you're highly enthusiastic and you have time to spend a lot of time focusing on this or at least checking in then you know you could probably go to more of an intraday trader but if if it's harvesting time right now and you're a gardener like some people are during the season or you're getting ready for the holidays, you may want to pull back and you may actually be a better one month chart tracker. And then with that, I'm just going to kind of delete these indicators. So if, if you're getting ready for holiday time and you just do not have the time to just really look at these all day long, but you still know you know that the global world is moving forward with this technology and you want to stay in and you want to stay because you know if you're if you don't have anything you have no chance of gaining anything so it's like this this conundrum where you're just wondering do i buy and hold or do i sell or do i wait and if you sit there and you you do analysis paralysis you never get in and so the biggest i think hurdle mental hurdle a trader has to get over is who are you and what can you handle? And if you don't know yet, then I recommend you going into doing the paper trading and learning what time frame you can handle when you're trading. So here's the one month chart. And so when I look at the one month chart, this is where things could kind of get confusing. So I want to simplify it for you. On a one month chart, this is where each candlestick represents a month. And then you could see if you're a one month trader, well, it's still um, the average true range is saying it's still going down on a one month average. But here's the thing, you also have to wait four weeks for the next candlestick. But let's go back in history and kind of see what happened for Stellar in the past so that when you are looking at the one month chart, if you're a one month trader, then you say, wow, it's in a one month upward momentum. And it's kind of like when a plane gets up and after it takes flight and it's got that forward momentum, it just goes forward and it probably has less energy to continue to forward because it's already up there. It already, it took, it went up. And so it's just that scenario. If you find something that's in a one month upward directory, like we just saw that ripple for one month and that's why it kind of pulled out to do an eagle eyes view today on the coin 360 heat map to see what is in a one month upward trajectory. So we can kind of connect to that momentum. So I'm gonna take the ruler right here and we're gonna start down here and kind of say, okay, where was it at the highest? So for 334 days, stellar lumens went up 896%. And that's 11 bars. And so that's 11 months. So that was June, first 2020 to may 1st 2021 so that may be more of your momentum that may be more of your trading style so you buy one month and you sell 11 months later you got to find something in a one month chart that is in that upward movement so joe do you have any um feelings about that do you have any part of your asset or portfolio right now that you are doing more of a one month perspective on versus like a one day or a one week 
Well, yes, I, I, I do have some um, different positions that I'm looking at for the long term, you know. But when you get a turn up on the uh, monthly cycle, um, it's it's a good thing to have. But, you know, it's generally something that you have to wait for, <laughs> you know. I mean, if you look at that, like just on the years, if you scroll back a little bit, um, before 2020, I don't know if there's any data there. Yeah. If you look at it from 2018, like I guess like when on the on the signal line, when the signal line first crossed down, right, to when the signal line turned up, or, or you can use the TSI really. Oh. You know, oh, okay, you're okay. talking about at least two years. So yeah, like when you have something in here that's on the monthly that sets up, that's something in there that's something special. But you're not going to always get that. You know, that's why traders use. Uh, the other short term time frames uh, to position themselves in accordingly because, you know, that's like maybe looking for um, the needle inside the haystack. I mean, you can get it because, see, with these tools, what's great about it is that you can see the market coming to you. Whereas, is that if you were in this market, let's say in 2018, and this market was going down, right? Without these tools, you wouldn't have an idea or a clue of when the market would be turning so you, you would be you could be led astray by misinformation or you know different propaganda out there on the market <laughs> and yeah not really have an understanding to know and it may be years you may be just confused but here at least when you see that there is no um uh confirmation within the chart overlays here you can set your expectation low or high. Um, you can say, okay, well, on the scale between one to ten, maybe it's uh, a five. It's halfway through its cycle. But at some point in here, this will turn green, and at that point, you'll say, hey, this is really a ten. But um, the perfect trade, um, you know, is something. Um, that's sometimes very difficult to achieve because you have to wait. But if you are strategic enough and also if you're in the market and you're holding and, and you're stuck in markets like, like I am, I'm stuck in a bunch of stuff um, right now in this crypto. Um, I, I'm looking at this too. So, but I, I don't have anything on here on right now at this moment on a monthly that I can say, Hey guys, look at this. Th this thing is moving. It's just uh, not there yet. I'm going to quickly you know, go through all of our watch list and add a monthly chart and see what has enough data. There is another point I want to bring up to everybody is a lot of my stock friends that own um, hedge funds and uh, and uh, family bank management. They years ago wanted nothing to know about crypto and and i'm going to explain why they couldn't verbalize it but they do know now why it's because of this so abe coin came to be on this is coinbase on march 1st 2022 if you were managing trillions of dollars of somebody else's money and you had you know your commissions were based on what you you know how you increased their wealth you're not going to base any of that money on something with such a low historical data you can't, your indicators don't even get triggered. And so if you were trading, I would love you to put your institutional trader hat on and say, pretend you are managing a trillion dollar portfolio of clients money. And what would your client say if you purchased that? So when you see something like this with low historical data on a one month basis, I would tend to say, that doesn't have enough data. Now this is Bitcoin Tether, and that's most likely why this has no data because it's USDT, it's not USD. So let's see if the USD one has more data. Here's Ripple, oh my gosh. So guys, remember we're on the one month chart. Look at the early reversal came in for the one month chart. That's pretty big. Um, but other indicators have not on the one month chart. You can see what is going on and Ripple again, what we just saw with Stellar Lumen. So I'm going to just go ahead and change Ripple. So I didn't pre do this. I wanted to do this um, 
this upward movement analyzation together with you guys so you can see what somebody does personally. Um, what this is, is when the day and the week on the radar are both moving upward. But, but I'm gonna stick with just the one month chart, but this is the significance and why this radar is so valuable because you're seeing the one hour, the four hour, the one day and the one week. And you know, this is all an upper projectile. Algoland, Algorand, which is the same, we just saw that on that on the slide that Algo, Chills, and Ripple were moving up for the one month. Stellar Lumens, actually. Wow, okay, there we go. Sometimes, again, it just, um, just let your radar give it a few minutes or seconds to register, so that is all the way up. And let's look at this ICP. Let's give it a minute for the data to come in. So ICP, I guess, is not necessarily up. So I have to change that one. I'm going to change it to orange because that's the color, my color coding for ones that the day and the week are different. All right. So let's keep going through. And I'm going to look for something that has the radar for the one month. Chills, even though that was, it was showing that it was up, but it's, it's down for the four hours of the day and the week but for the one month it was up, but it doesn't have enough data. Notice that it, it's not enough data. So I would say it's got a, that's a risk element to look at. Now this is Ethereum with Bitcoin. And the, the early reversal came in, but the average true range for a Bitcoin buying Ethereum is actually still in the upward momentum. So people are jumping between Ethereum and Bitcoin. All right, we're just, I'm just gonna quickly go yeah. through these. So you guys, oh, go, do you wanna go ahead and say something, sorry. Well, I just wanted to say something before we close out today. Um, this is that, uh, you know, um, tomorrow is the uh, Fed meeting and some of the new coins that been put on the Coinbase, which is the USDT, that if you put up pull up USDT, EUR. I've been noticing over the last few weeks that there's been a lot of money flow that's actually been flowing uh, into this coin, uh, into all the USDTs. Now, there's no data, there's not enough data in here for that, for what you want to do on the daily, I mean, on the uh, monthly. You know, it's just enough really coming on the weekly. But if you go to a daily chart, Right today, there was an, another ERI, and uh, you know you could be looking in here to see if we get a green dot here tomorrow. So this would be one in here interesting to see if the TSI gets a green dot, we may see uh, this market here go higher and test some highs. This is the best uh, setup that I really seen, um, you know, because some of the trades are in motion. So I try to get things in here set where that you can uh, set the alerts on your chart overlays and get the maximum value of what you have and applying them. Well, I think this has a lot to do with what's going on over in Europe right now. So this basically means the euro is losing value. Well, you know, and uh, the thing is, is that uh, right now, the way this is set up, this was looking like it's another cycle because the uh, signal line is just about to cross. The uh, right. TSI, we're waiting for the next green dot. And uh, with the trend indicator, we're waiting for the next green. So, you know, you try to catch things that great before they happen, if possible, because that's the best way to learn from, to learn how to use this, these tools. and set your alerts so that you don't uh, miss anything because it's too much to try to remember in your head. Right. All right. Do you guys have any questions or do you want to just, do you mind if I quickly go through this on a one month basis? Look at this. The ERI just triggered for syntax for the one month chart. See that? Let me just tighten it up so you guys can see the arrow. Oh, wow. Can't get the arrow to show, but the early reversal right here for syntax. Synthetic. Synthetics. 
just jumped in. Again, a lot of these just don't have enough data because they're just so new. And is there a place where people can go see the report for tomorrow, Joe, that you want to let them know where to go to so they can kind of see what's happening with the the meeting tomorrow? Well, it's not a report. It's an announcement that oh, they yeah. do at oh, okay. 2 o'clock. And, uh, you know, the, any CNBC news or station will have it. Or Bloomberg. Found another one month TSI. Ether for dye, using dye to buy ether. However, the signal line is completely separated. So that one is going to be an amazing watch to see how that goes. But it is low on the counter band. So ether for dye, using dye to buy ether. And USD buying ethereum looks like that one month went up but it's the same token that's early reversal remember that guys so it hasn't followed through on the trend or the tsi or the signal line and here's usdt here anchor nothing that one Oh, there we go. Link. Chain link. Chain link has an early reversal that came in. So put your eyes on chain link. And Adam, remember I showed you on that heat map earlier? It said that Adam was flying high. So there we go. Early reversal with Adam. It's almost the second counter band so and just so you guys know adam is the ticker symbol but cosmos is the actual name so don't get too confused but we're still waiting on the tsi and the signal line so you know there is some risk until you have follow through with all these other indicators almost done with this one month analysis we have an ethereum classic we have the tsi looks like it's triggered so that could be a good thing. And you had the early reversal earlier, and it is not hitting the top ES um, counter band right here. So check out Ethereum Classic being purchased with USD. And the volatility index is below 20 at 17. Oh, one just found something. Look at this. So for ample fourth governance token, you have the TSI that just got triggered. This is a newer asset, so there's not a lot of data on here for Coinbase, but keep that on your radar fourth. And let's just see what else we can find. Love these indicators, Joe. It was just so good. I'm just going to delete all these notes because if you put notes on one time frame, it just kind of um, it doesn't really correspond with the other time frame as well. So just going to delete the clutter here. All right, so Decentraland, no, not yet. All right, nope. Okay, we're almost done, guys, so looking at the one-month analysis to see if we can find some one-month momentum. And spell. And this is literally how you do it. You just, you got to manually go through these things sometimes. You can set your alerts. Oh, here we go. EOS. EOS has an early reversal that just came in, and it is up for the one hour and the four hour. And this is a one month chart. And you can see that the average true range is still in the green zone. Even though the early reversal came in, it did go down, but it still remains in the green zone. So, still waiting on trend and the TSI to follow suit. But you can see, like right here, the TSI did not put in a green, I mean, a red arrow down and things look like they're probably going to be tightening on the signal line. Not enough data on EOS for the volatility index to pop up for the one month basis.
All right, that's a lot of stuff that I had put on earlier for this. I, I made a lot of money on crypto, the CRO coin before, but it was recently put on Coinbase and this is reflecting the Coinbase exchange. So not enough data yet. So we're probably a year out for, for Coinbase's, all these new coins that keep on acquiring to give real good resourceful data. So Ox, uh, looks like early reversal came in. It did try to hit that upper counter, didn't happen all the way. And slowly sideways, you can see with this candlestick is pretty short, but then the TSI came in. Now you have everything down for the one hour. So that's a not yet. All right, link. This is three months ago, but the TSI did come in. So chain link. Watch that, but that was being purchased by Bitcoin. And then you have a TSI green dot on Curve. Curve Dow. Just gonna delete these so you guys can see everything clearly. So you may wanna notate that one. Yeah, well, and last one, Bitcoin USD, one month basis. So the one thing I like about this chart, even though it's going down, Look at where it is, guys. It is on the low counter band. Huge, huge, huge for acquisitions position. I mean, that is beautiful. If you want to look at history here, remember each one of these candlesticks was one month. It has not been below that lower counter band in a long time. Look at that. It even down here in January 2000. Even in December, it didn't go below that Keltner band. So I'm right here in March 1st, 2020, it, it dipped on a, a, a wick down very temporarily. But other than that, it, it's soaring higher than the top Keltner. So this is a very exciting time to be watching that market and steady Freddy, I say, be steady and, and pick your chance to get in and and be watching i would say all hands on deck when it comes to bitcoin if if that's your choice of investment um because that's super exciting joe to close do you want to say anything about that like how you feel um about it being below the lowest keltner band Um, well, let's wait here to tomorrow's decision and see where we close at uh, on the weekly. And um, and that's something we'll we'll catch up with next week. All right. Sounds good. All right. You guys have a great day and have fun trading this week. We look forward to seeing you next week. All right. Thank you.